Hey everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder here at Upkeep and it is release Friday once again, September 27th. Got some big things to share with you all. First up on iOS, we've updated and improved our GPS start and stop timers. Again, just this is just helping you, our customers, keep better track of all of your work orders, keep time on all of them to get better reporting and analytics to you. Um, the second thing is our expanded request configuration. So this is all about expanding the ability to configure and customize your request portal um, and also your internal request form. Again, this is just helping you, our customers, just customize it to all of your specific company needs. Go in, check it out. Let us know what you think. I'm going to pass the baton to our two product managers to show you exactly how it works in Upkeep. Thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and I'm a product manager here at Upkeep. For today, we have three new features to go over. They're all on iOS, and if we get really good feedback on it, we'll build it out on Android as well. The first one is our GPS features. So now if you choose to enable location tracking, we'll be able to remind you to turn on and off your timer or to go on or off shift when you're done with your day. Second feature is around improved image upload. So I'll show you in a little bit, but essentially it's now a lot faster, it's a lot less disruptive. The third feature is, you know, last time we released dynamic island timers. So on your push notifications, you now have like a little running timer. Now we've added a little stop button directly on that push notification. So you can turn off your work order without needing to even go into the work order itself in upkeep. So let's get into it. First feature I'm going to demo to you is our GPS enabled features. So what exactly does that mean? Um, GPS location tracking means that if you have a work order with a location attached to it or a work order with an asset that has a location attached to it, we essentially have your coordinates. And so if you choose to turn this on in settings, which I'll show you at the end of the demo, um, you can go and as you get within 100 meters of your site, which has these location coordinates, then we'll be able to send you these triggers. And when you leave and you're more than 100 meters away, we'll also be able to send you these triggers. And you have to be the primary worker assigned to it to receive these. So there's two things. Let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you a video of it because I can't run around the block right now. I'm just going to show you directly what it looks like if I were in New York City, for example. So I'm walking around right now. And as you can see, I'm approaching my work site. So I'm a technician. And then this work site, you know, there's a location attached to it. And so I can tap the button to remind me to start the work order. So I go here, I open up the work order, and then I start working. And the timer will also automatically start. And as I'm leaving the site, so let's say end of the day, this will remind me to stop the timer to end the work order. And then the second notification you would get is that looks like you might be leaving work for the day. So you can click here to go off shift. And so I'll show you what that looks like. It takes you to the settings page where you can go off shift. And the good thing about going off shift is that you'll stop getting push notifications. So, you know, if you're getting inundated with messages as you go home at the end of the day, you won't get that if you remember to go off shift at the end of your work day. So that's what that looks like. And I will go into the upkeep app itself to show you what it looks like in settings. So I'm on the settings page now. I click on my profile. And then when I go down here, by default, my location monitoring is disabled. So we're not tracking your location by default. But if you want those features, we, if you want to be reminded to go on shift, off shift, and you want a timer to start and stop, then you're going to want to turn that off. And then you're going to want to turn on this bottom toggle if you want a reminder to go on shift, off shift. So that's the first feature here. Second feature is around our improved image upload experience. So again, I'll show you a video of what it looks like before and after. So this on the left side here, this is our current image upload. And then on the right side, this is what our improved version looks like that you're about to get today. So as you can see, we're doing the same thing on both sides. We're just going to add a bunch of images to our work order at once. And then we'll have them both going. And the left-hand side, as you can see, 
the spinner takes a really long time. On the right hand side, these pictures are coming up almost immediately. And as they're coming up, you can go and do other things on the work order screen as well. And let's look at that in real life. So I'm going back to my app. Allow while using app. I'm gonna go back to my app and then I'm gonna go create a new work order. And then I'm gonna take some pictures. I'm actually gonna go directly into my camera roll and I'll select a few pictures. And then as they're uploading, now you can go and do other things as well. So you don't have to sit around and wait for the images to upload themselves. And then the last feature I'm gonna show you today would be our dynamic island timer improvements. So I'm gonna go into a work order, let's say open. I'm just gonna go ahead, start a new work order. And now I'm working. So let's say I turn off my phone and then when I turn it back on, I will say always allow. And then I have the stop button directly in here. And so I can hit stop. And then now my work order is stopped. So if I go into my work order, you can see that the timer has stopped. And I was able to do that directly from my push notification without needing to enter the app. And those are the three features that we have rolled out today. I hope you will play around with it. Let us know what you think. We would love to make improvements. And we would also love to roll this out on Android. Thank you so much for your time. Happy Friday, everyone. My name is Spencer. I'm a senior product manager here at Upkeep, and I am super excited to be sharing uh, an update to request configuration with you this week. The goal of this release is to close some gaps between you know, the fields that are available on a request and whether or not those fields actually you know, can be configured. Um, so there were certain fields on the request, uh, a pretty good example of this is priority and images, uh, which were previously not configurable, and now we've expanded our configuration so, to make those fields configurable. So if you go to your requests settings in Upkeep, you'll now see a slightly different layout for how you configure your, your request. And you'll see these two columns here. Um, and what this is going to allow you to do is, you know, configure what is required in order to create a request. What information do you want to gather from your requester? Um, and we've added to those options things like priority and image and files and description. Um, these were fields that, you know, previously were just always optional on the field, but with no way to require them. Um, so now, you, you know, you can, you can you can preserve your data integrity and ensure you're always getting the right information uh, on your requests. And then we've added this new column, which allows you to configure what is going to be required in order to approve a request. So previously, what was required to approve a request came from you know, what was required to create a work order. We've now separated that out so that you can you know, set up a specific configuration that says, what do, do my users need to, what information needs to be on a request before it can be moved to that next step of sort of a ready to work work order. Um, so you know, a, a good example of this is maybe your requester, you wanna make sure that they just give you a description you know in the location and an asset uh, but in order to approve that request you want to make sure that you have a due date assigned you want a category assigned and so on and so forth you can set all that up here within uh, within upkeep in your settings the public request portal also is uh, receiving kind of the same treatment here where where some of the fields that were previously not configurable are now configurable uh, so the, the big ones to highlight here are again description priority images and files um, so those are ones which previously did, uh, at least description images files existed on the, the public request form, but with no option to configure them as required, meaning you couldn't, you know, force your requesters to, to send an image along with their requests. Now you can. Uh, priority previously was not captured at all on the public request portal, um, but now it is. It'll be by default hidden since that's kind of the state, the current state of the world. Um, but in order to turn it on, you just have to come over here to your settings, move this over from hidden to optional or required, and, and then those users will be prompted um, to input priority. 
There is mobile support for uh, these request configurations, uh, meaning you know you can set up your configurations here in the web app, but whatever you do set up will be respected by both iOS and Android apps. Uh, that doesn't apply for public requests, which are only uh, available, you know, you can only submit public requests via a web browser, uh, so there is no mobile app component here. Um, all this configuration, uh, it, you know, is available now. Uh, we are super, super excited to hear what you guys think. If there are other ways that you want to be configuring your request forms, please let us know. Um, we've got kind of more plans for more configuration uh, that, that are coming your way in the in the future. Um, but so please let us know, you know, what else you'd like to see and, and what you think about the updates we've made so far. Thank you so much.